Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Training our horses and miniature cows in ranch versatility. Penny, Rusty and Susie, our bull and heifer. Roping Rusty with Morgan Horse, Sammy. Training Eve to drive cart. Training Eve to work over her haunches with a motor cow simulator. Training Eve to lay down. Training Eve to harness, pull a log. Training Semi to harness, pull a log on turf. Jumping at liberty to music, making our Morgan horses our partners. Training Eve on a cow roping simulator. Training on our driveway, which is covered by sand, so we have a straight track. Stepping over poles, jumping over crossbar jumps. Training in our trail obstacles area. Semi on the big steps. Morgan Horse Sadie doing obstacles rainlessly. Morgan Horse Sadie learning to pull a cart. Mini Zebu Heifer Susie learning to drive a cart. Bull Rusty learning to pull a harrow. Here are clips of our attempts to teach various horses to back around barrels. Just going to start very briefly today. Some more um, and practice. Him, I want the in back whip. around a barrel. How are we going to cue Sparky that we want him to bend and back around this barrel? Okay, so first we're going to lead him around the barrel and looking for hind legs for good crossover. Good. Very nice. He's giving. Nice bend. Nice uh -huh. eye. He's not showing any stress at all. And we'll try the other way. And going that direction, his stirrup hit the barrel, which I think is just a distraction. <laughs> I hit the barrel, which is another distraction. Let's see. I just want to make sure that we can cue Sparky. Oh, okay. Move his front end, his hind end. So in various can directions. Walk around it in both directions. The stirrups are down again, and they might hit again. But I think going backwards, he's not going to be quite as close to the barrel. So I'm going to ask him to, I guess, keep his bend. Come on. Good boy. Huh? I think what's pretty clear is that I don't know how to get this horse to bend backwards on the barrel. Mm -hmm. Suggestions? <laughs> From the audience be, here? Uh, it might be better done from saddle because you can control both right. his neck and his haunches Good. to make him bend around the barrel and go backwards. So we might choose to do that okay, let's see. as a next step. Uh, 
you know. So uh, what I'm seeing is I try and it can go in a circle backwards. Let's see what we can get. Okay, so good. So you can see his his bend is in the opposite direction. So I think, and that's why I say if you he's willing, look, he's he's finally saying, okay, you want to back up and go in a circle. He's, he's doing the basics of what I'm asking because I yeah, good boy. Okay, now he's doing one step crossed over. Good. But once again, okay, good, good. Good. Another way you might be able to do Good. this is with ground driving. Have you ever ground driven him? No, I haven't. Then you have a control Good. over his neck and his haunches at the same time. But first we'd have to make sure that he'll ground drive for you. Good. And not be concerned about the ground driving lines touching him in various places. Right. Here are clips showing thoroughbred gelding lotus during his first ground driving lesson around the barrel. What we're doing today is a first time for Lotus. I believe he's never been ground driven. No. Okay. Um, so we're just going to do very minimal uh, instruction and trying it out with Lotus. He's been lunched. He's doing fine. It's a windy day, but not too bad. Uh, so we feel safe that we can continue in spite of um, possible weather distractions. Now Lotus has on a no-ring snaffle. Uh, and for those of you who perhaps don't know what these bits are called, this is an O-ring and it's got a piece of metal that's broken in the mouth, which is good control for stop and start and right and left. Um, now Lotus knows a lot. And lunging is nothing. Uh, Joel used one long line here to lunge him in a circle, and he was just fine on it. You can probably hear the wind. Uh, because he has never been ground driven, um, we're going to start very slowly. And I added here, uh, let's see if we can zoom in on this. This is a quick release onto the ring of this Sir Single. Quick release so that if we get into trouble, we all know that we... Pull down on the sleeve and this releases from the ring. Again, because of the wind, I'm being very cautious when I approach Lotus. There we go, quick releases back on. Now, what I'm going to do is connect. These are long lines. Connect these long lines. They're not expensive to the O-ring. Of his bit, I'm going to go through the ring of this quick release. And why are we doing all this? Well, number one, ground driving is a real good way of uh, training a horse from the ground with cues that are similar to training a horse from the saddle. And number two is ultimately what we want to be able to do is fine tune our ground driving cues so that we can get Lotus eventually to back around that barrel with the proper bend. That's the big eventually. That's oh. the big goal. Oh. Getting a little, you see he sees out of his peripheral, he sees this white lunge line. It's just a, a cotton it. flat line and Jill's going to show it to him. I'll take it so you can do that one. Okay. Remember horses are colorblind but they can see shades and he certainly sees this thing. He's not sure what it is. To the O-ring on this side, I snap this driving line, and I, as I walk around Lotus, I'm watching for signs of concern. I'm not seeing it at this time, but again, well, but something might fall, some deadfall might come down from these trees. Who knows what? It happened yesterday. He's a little bit concerned. I can he tell. is, huh? Yeah, I can Jill, Jill is his mommy and knows him much better than me. Okay, now... I'm showing it to him. Let's let him investigate. We're doing um, ground driving with leading, you see, today. Mm -hmm. Okay? He's going to start getting used to the fact that 
when you lead him, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing things with these ground driving lines with my fingers, um, explaining to him that I want a right hand turn, a left hand turn, maybe a wall and a back. Okay, so I'm going to walk around here remembering that strike zone is right about here. You want to stay a hula hoop away from his back legs. Okay, now I'm going to stay way back, but you see I'm connected to his mouth with these Boy. ground driving lines. And one other caveat, these are long lines, very long. Uh, and I'm Good not going to let them drop onto the ground and possibly wrap around my legs in case he does get spooked and starts running. So I'm holding them in my left hand. I'm using the lines as if they were reins. And Joe is just going to walk them around. I'm applying ever so slight, ever so slight a tug, a give and a tug on the ground driving lines, which he feels at his mouth. Good boy. Good boy, Good Lotus. Good boy. And we might as well start teaching him. Ha. Ha means left. So I'm tugging a little bit on the left. And you see he's getting used to the ground driving lines on his right leg and hip. Now I'm going to say G, G Lotus, G, G means go to the right. This Good is harness boy. language. Good boy Lotus. Good boy. G Lotus, G, hugging a little bit on the right. He hears his Jimmy. stable mate calling to him. Let's go back towards the camera, Joe, because there's something I want to do close to the camera. G, G, good boy, Lotus. Good boy. Steady, ho. And although he was going to ho anyway, because Joe was asking him to, at his head, I just did a little bit of a tug. I want by association for him to understand the words and the fact that even though I'm way back here, I'm controlling or asking for control of his mouth. Whoa. Oh, good boy, Lotus. Oh. Now, one other problem that has been happening, and I haven't mentioned it until we stopped, is that he keeps flipping his tail over the ground driving lines, uh -huh. which, yes, you see something we have to get. Uh -huh. Maybe he'll stop doing it eventually. We uh -huh. don't want to be pulling right or left I if his tail is putting a pressure on it. Uh -huh. One more caveat. Do not wrap these lines around your hands or your fingers. Always make sure that if you do have a spook and need to drop them, they're not wrapped around any appendage of yours. Now I'm going to ask him. This is critical. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Whoa, Lotus. I'm asking him with my right ground driving line with a little tug, a little direct rein. Now I want those haunches to come over. Let's see if we can do that. Gee. Whoa. Whoa. Good boy. And then here's the critical move if we're going to get him back with the right bend around that barrel. We're going to ask him to back. Small steps if possible. See the, how the tail is it's, uh, switching a little bit due to his stress probably. Okay, now I'm going to ask him to back. I'm going to go maybe three steps back. Lotus, back. Back. A little back. tug. Back. Good boy. Back. Good boy. Good. Whoa. Good boy. Whoa. Tommy Garland, he always gives his horse. He's an Arab trainer in RFT. He always gives his horse three chances with verbal cues. That's whoa, whoa, and then the third whoa. If they aren't absolutely ready to whoa, he'll use whatever pressures he needs to to reinforce the request. Now we're going to do some figure eights right here in the shade, smaller circles. Ha! Good, Lotus. Good. See how the ground driving line has freedom from his body? because they're going through a, a ring that pulls away from the body, but not too much. Good, Lotus. Let's do a figure eight right here. Huh? Lotus, G, G. Good, Lotus. Good boy. <laughs> Good, all the way around, G. Now we're gonna do a small railroad track circle, 
And yeah. if he counter bends, if his neck bends in the wrong way, <laughs> I will apply a little direct pressure with my right hand on the right ground driving line. Good, Lotus. All the way around again. Good, it's loose. Of course, he's being guided by Jill, but not that's how that. we're going to do it at first. G. Not much, though. Not much. Good. No. G. Now let's go around the barrel. Not real close. G, Lotus. G. Little tug on my right. We're going clockwise around the barrel. Might be a totally different response counterclockwise. G. G. Very nice. Not too close at first. Oh. Now he's counter bending, so I'm pulling back. G. Good. I want him to understand the bend that I want for this task. Steady. Ho. Good, Lotus. And now here's the beginning Ho. of the Ho. goal that we are trying to get to. But first of all, look, notice how my lines are kind of hanging. That's not safe. I'm going to collect them up again and in a way that doesn't wrap them around my hand. I'm going to keep them under control. Can we let him go left around the barrel? Okay, before we try any yeah, back? Yeah. Good idea. We're going to go both directions forward be before we even try the slightest small step backwards. Again, I have to collect up my lines. Good boy. Okay, so we're going to go ha, Lotus, ha. Good. He feels the line on his right rear leg. He feels a little bit of give and take, direct rain of the drive line, the right. Good boy, Lotus. And he's bending. He's relaxed. His head is down. He's licking his lips. And Joe, I think, would agree that he is not stressed at this moment. No. And I think, if anything, at the points he gets stressed, it's when the wind kind of picks up. So it might have more to do with the, the weather than with the activity. Okay, now when we're facing the camera, I'm going to say, steady, ho, Lotus, ho. And I usually say steady or easy when I'm going to go down in speed, and I say and if I'm going to go up. And I usually cluck for a jog, and I kiss for a lope, but that's just something that uh, oh, you know, oh. is a personal preference, and we just try to make sure we're consistent, those of us who work with any particular horse. Now what I'm going to do, this is just a very small step, and I am going to, I'm going to use the natural horsemanship concept that says, when you relieve pressure, that's when the horse learns. So I'm going to ask Lotus to go step backward to my left. So he's going to step back, but turn to the left with his haunches, and nevertheless, I'm going to ask his head to stay bent to the Lotus. left. Back. Back. I'm shortening my right rein. Back. I'm applying pressure with my left. Back. Oh, and I didn't get those haunches over. Do you see? Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you're trying to do this exercise without some kind of rein or leg control. So we're going to work on that. I kind of expected that to happen because this is the first time we've asked him to do it. But I think eventually he'll understand. He'll be light. He'll be soft. He'll say, oh, if I feel this ground driving line here on my back, hip, uh, or leg, I'm going to push away from it. And then as soon as he does, I'm going to relieve pressure. And that's going to tell him that he's given me the right I answer. I think he's so going to have to work on backing straight first. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah. But you know what would also help is if we had some a third person here with maybe a quirt so he'd understand. He yeah. doesn't quite understand at this moment yeah, that feel. That but yeah. he might understand a quirt, a little tap. All right. Let's go back. Lotus back. Back. Good boy. Very nice. Good. Whoa. Oh, now he's good he's inching over to the right, which is perfectly expected at this point in his training. We're going to go. Let's step up. Step up, Lotus. Good boy. Step up. Good. I'm tugging a little bit on the right just to keep that bend. Whoa. Who? Oh. Good. Now I'm going to ask for a back, maybe just a step or two, not three. Back, Lotus. Back. 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 Whoa. 
He's still oh. going out. And did you notice when Alicia was trying to do this with Sparky yesterday, oh. she had that problem too. Well, he's, he's, I mean, he's definitely not sure what he's supposed to do. I That's right. Know. And neither did Sparky oh. know. And I said, let's try ground driving. Let's let him walk forward because he needs okay. to go. All right. That's and then, uh, and then at some point when we feel comfortable, we'll get in the saddle and, uh, and if a third person were here and using a, an arm extension, we might help him to understand. He's just doing fine about staying calm, walking around, walking straight, walking G and ha. Here came his tail up again. He doesn't even realize it. So I just drop my line enough to get free of the tail. Let's do this. Let's go up to the barrel. G, G Lotus, on the left side. G, aha, uh -huh. huh, Lotus, we're doing a serpentine here. <laughs> Whoa. Uh -oh. Whoa. Good now boy. let's see, close to the barrel as we are, will he allow us to ask him to step two steps back? I'm going to get behind him, and I'm asking for a straight back, but only back. two steps. Back. There goes the tail. Wait a sec. Wait, wait, wait. The tail. There you go. All right. And you back. see why I didn't want these to be too high or too low, but parallel with the ground. Okay. Lotus back. 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 Give and take. Good. One, two. Whoa. Good boy. Good, Lotus. Good. Good now boy. let's step to the right a little bit. Step up, Lotus. Step up. Step up. Good. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Then that's the way we may do it. A quarter turn at a time. Right. Again, the tail went over. Probably because he's stressed. All right. All right, you can see how much patience. Yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, how conceptually Good this boy. will get him to where we want to go. Conceptually. Um, eventually, from saddle. But for now, much better to have ground driving lines than to just have a lunge line or a lead line in trying to teach a horse to back around a barrel with the proper bend. There are various ways to teach a horse to back around a barrel. Use lead line and arm extension. Use ground driving lines. Use saddle with rein and leg control. Here are clips of Eve being trained with all three methods. Okay, here's another session with Eve. We're teaching her to back around the barrel. We're using a lead line at this point with a cavison on her nose. We're using visual and uh, verbal request to back in small steps and then as soon as we get her in position bent correctly around we ask her to let's see what she can do she's saying over over look at that good we're teaching her small steps proper bend yes and this is just going to take repetition Good. Eve is relaxed. She's not throwing her hips out. She's not stiff in her neck. This is Firecrest Easter Eve. My oldest there. daughter. Mary. Very nice. All right. Now we're going to try it for a few minutes with ground driving lines and see if we can get it that way too. Well, now Eve has some ground driving lines on with a side pull, which gives you a little bit more nose control than does a cavison. See if we can get her to walk around the barrel. Bend nicely. See if we can get her to hoe. And I'm going to leave the camera on this barrel and we'll see if we can, with the third person, get, uh, get that bend and the back with the small steps using an arm extension. Good. Very nice. Very nice. We need to keep that bend. A little bit with your right drive line. Yes. You see the drive line is like the rain. Good. Good, Eve. Reward. Remove the pressure. Get the right answer. Slow. Small steps. Slow. We want bend. We're getting that. Good. Good, Eve. Good, and Rosie has to stay behind. Very nice, Eve. Oh. Very nice. Okay, when you're comfortable, stop her and let her think about it. Okay. Now, I am going to, if she starts balking, ask her to step up again. 
I'm going to step over here with my arm extension down. Okay, back her up, and I'm going to do back, the visual. Back, 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 back. Good, good, good. That was one small step. I'm do it from this side. We do small steps. When her haunches move over, away from the barrel, I'm going to be there and with a visual blocker actually tapping her rhythmically on her hips, ask her to move over. And if I get one small step right answer with the right bend, I know we're on our way. Now step up, step up. No, this way. There you go. Good, she's licking her lips. She's a little bit concerned, but she's licking her lips. Over. Yes, a small step back, and she's getting closer and closer to the barrel. Back. Over. Over. Good. Very nice. Now, Eve. Rosie's going to get up on Eve with the vaulting sir single on, a pair of reins. The idea here is, can we get her to wrap around the barrel in the forward and in the backward direction with rein and leg control? We'll leave the side pull on her nose, because it seems to be giving us enough control for this task here can in the arena. All the body parts of your horse. Can you move the forequarters, the hindquarters, the ribs? Can you get lateral flexion with the head? These are all prerequisite skills to being able to back around a barrel smoothly and slowly. Now Rosie's going to try a back and if her, if Eve's hips swing out, Rosie's going to use leg to say, no, 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 I want you to back, but around. Looking back at her hips, yes, yes. Okay, now if she starts to, oh, very nice, Rosie. Yes, yes, there you go. Backing around the barrel, went on the horse's back and having available to us the reins and leg control. Yes, yes, very nice. That's a perfect place to stop and remove the pressure and give Eve reward. And now we've shown you back and around the barrel with a number of okay, different that's all for today. Sonia Sokolow, the Urban Cowgirl, triple W, Urban Cowgirl Channel, dot com. Our cast of characters, Sadie and Eve. Sammy, Rusty, and Susie. Triple W, the